Hi, D. Hi, Chow. Hi, Gloria. <clears throat> I'm going to get messy. Hi, Stephanie. Hello, Kim, Margaret, Tracy, Stacy. Whole FSC team is here. Hi, Susan. Hello, Leah. Did you enjoy your dinner, Leah? Hi, John. Hi, Stephanie. I should probably take this off, huh? Uh-oh, what happened? I got kicked off already? That was weird. Oh, Chow, you did? They are beautiful, aren't they? Hi, Patty. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Sorry I am a little late today. I made a nice meatloaf dinner for the kids. We made, um, what did we make? Uh, meatloaf, all gratin potatoes, and green beans, and it was delicious. The stamp is available. The dies are not. The stamp is from the ton. There are three butterfly stamps on there. There's a monarch. Um, I forget the name of the other two butterflies. Uh, Swallowtail and what's the blue butterfly called? Yeah, that's the Leah upstairs in her room. Ooh, chili sounds good. Hi, Caroline. Um, but the stamps are available. The dies are no longer available. I don't know if they're on back order, but you can get the stamp. And there's three different styles. I might order the other two styles. We'll see. <gasps> Denise, I'm coming over. I love cheesecake. Hi, Kim. Right? Mmm, cheesecake. All right. So last night, as soon as we logged off, I actually went upstairs, and there was a package upstairs. Oh, Chipotle burrito. Mm, Y'all, I just got done eating. Stop talking about food. Hi, Kim. Hi, Susie. Um, let me find it here. But I got all the little pots from Spectrum Noir. Okay, so these are the sparkle pots. I swatched them out. I did a video while I was watching them. So I will upload that for you guys. But you can see there's some nice shimmer in there, some nice bright colors. And then since I had them out, I got my markers out. So here are my markers. And there is a small difference in colors between the pots and the markers. And I don't know if that's because the pots are, I think the pots are probably more concentrated because there's more in there than the markers. But um, we'll definitely play around with these. In fact, if you watch the video that went up this morning for Blue Night Rubber Stamps. The first card that I held up was all Spectrum Noir Sparkle Markers, and I think it came out fabulously. I can't show you the card because it gets mailed off to Blue Night Rubber Stamps, but fun with that. I haven't swatched out my new watercolors on in the book yet. I'll have to do that. Um, the second package I got, also from HSN, were the Spectrum Noir alcohol inks. Now this was a request from one of you guys. Hello Mona Lisa dear. Hey Bernie. Hi Jennifer. <laughs> Hi Sparkle Miss. Hey Laura. Alright so the second box I opened up were the Spectrum Noir alcohol inks. Now, I want to say a couple things here. I did not watch the HSN presentation on these inks. I, I got a request to try them. So, um, it was tw 12 alcohol inks. 
I, they all came individually wrapped in plastic, and then they were wrapped in bubble wrap, and then they were each in a paper bag, and then they were all in a box. So they, they came very nicely wrapped, I will say that, okay? So then I compared, after I got them all unwrapped, I compared them to... Um, the markers that I have in stock because, and you guys correct me here, the way I understand it is that, hello Mary, is that these inks are used to refill the Spectrum Noir alcohol pens, right? So these are the pens. I only have seven that match the refills, okay? So out of the 12, seven of them will be used for my markers. Now, you guys, these markers are probably 10 years old. Most of these markers are probably 10 years old. Before I refilled them, I swatched them out. None of them need to be refilled. So that's a good thing, I guess. I think I've only ever thrown away one alcohol marker that dried out, and it was a Spectrum Noir marker, and I could not find refills because they didn't have them back then, and I threw the marker out. But because I don't use them very much, um, you know, I never had to buy refills. And, you know, like I've been telling you guys, I really don't buy ink refills either. And for my Copic markers... I'm pretty sure I only have two refills. Hold on, I'll tell you. Yep, I only have two refills. So these are the only two markers I've bought refills for. E57 and E35. That's it. So what I wanted to do today was not only compare these inks to alcohol inks, not so much talk about the marker side of them, um, but talk about, um, these are older markers. They are, these are the original old body style. So if you have any of these, these are the original body style. These are super old. And then they went to these rounded ones, and I think they changed them again now. So my markers are all old, but like I said, I've never had to refill them. I only lost one. Um, so we'll see. And I bought them, like I said, when AC Moore had them, they were like $7 a pack, and then you could use your coupon. So I got them for 3 or $4 a pack. I don't do a lot with Copic markers. I'm not very comfortable in my coloring skills with Copic markers. I'm trying. I don't have a lot of them. Um, most people prefer Copics over the Spectrum Noir, and I'll tell you why. Because the older Spectrum Noir markers, these markers have a bullet nib, and they have a wide nib, but they didn't have a brush nib. So if you see why people prefer the Copics, it's because you could get refills. Well, now you can get refills. And because the Copics have a brush nib that you couldn't get on the Spectrum, Noir, Spectrum Noirs. Well, now the Spectrum Noir, I guess it's called the Artist Series. The Spectrum Noir Artist Series now have, um, yes, Gloria, they are nasty. Um, <laughs> but the Artist Series Spectrum Noir markers do have a brush nib, apparently. Um, but um, price point-wise, the Spectrum Noir were also a little cheaper than the Copics. Um, but I wanted to do comparison, not so much on the markers, but doing a comparison on the Upo paper they sent that I got with, with the blending solution, right? Um, and I wanted to compare the inks and what I did like and what I didn't like. And I did a little, I just did one quick little experiment yesterday. So I just wanted to show you guys that, all right? So I really can't compare to Copics because this is all I have for Copics. So a Copic refill these are very expensive. These are considered high quality, artist quality is what I will say. And it looks like these come with 2.5. It just says 
two, twin point five. I don't know if that's 2.5 ounces. Somebody help me out here. It's in Japanese. I know read a Japanese. But anyway, they're expensive. I know a lot of artists that use their Copic refills for alcohol art. I don't think that I would recommend that just because they're so expensive. If you're going to be splattering these all over your Yupo paper, it's going to run out pretty quickly. And I just wouldn't want to... I want to treat these like gold and not use them for my mixed media art is what I'll say. Uh-oh, Jody, did you give in and get the scan and cut? She did. She got a scan and cut. I know she did. Okay, so the illustrators are better than the Copic sketch. Okay, I knew that they were working on upgrading them. I don't have any of the new ones. But I'm not very good with my Copics. I'm telling you, Jody went and bought a scan and cut. She's been thinking about it. Okay, so what I wanted to compare is when we're doing alcohol ink backgrounds, and you guys saw me do the ones last week with the um, seahorse backgrounds, and like Leah and I did some alcohol ink projects. So this is what I want to talk about. So when you reach for alcohol inks, I don't think most of us are going to reach for our Copic refills is what I'm trying to say. I think, I mean, you could use them. I mean, go, it's your, it's your money, go your product. But um, I'm going to say, hi, she's a bell. I'm going to, I'm going to recommend if you're going to do this kind of alcohol ink background that you use something like Ranger inks. Pinata inks have been the ones I've been reaching for lately because you get a lot of bright colors and honestly, they're pretty inexpensive. I mean, you get a whole pack of the nine or 10. So if you're just starting out, you can get the whole set of rainbow pinata inks for under $20, I think it is. I'll look that up for you guys. And it comes with the white, but you get a whole rainbow of colors with the pinata inks. A lot of fun. What I don't like about the pinata inks is they are messy. Their dropper is very wide. Can't even open that one. Okay, so the dropper is very wide, so a little bit goes a long way. Like a lot of alcohol ink comes out of here. What I do like is, again, the bright colors. Um, you get a half a fluid ounce. Uh, for the price point, if you're just starting out with your collection, like I said, I think you get 10 or 12 colors. You get quite a few colors. Hold on. Let me see what you get here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know I got more here somewhere. I'll link it for you guys. But for the price point, pinatas, a lot of colors, not a lot of money. That's what I'm going to say about them, okay? But they are fairly messy, hence the gloves. I'm trying to open up my other alcohol ink container, and I can't reach it. I feel like I'm missing some colors here, Nance. Oh, here's some more. Okay, so... That's the pinatas, all right? Let me move those out of the way. Okay. The ranger inks. That is what most of us have and have been collecting for years and years and years. A couple of things that I like about the ranger inks is that the ranger inks... Yeah, that sounds right, Chow. You get nine for around 22, and it comes with a white, which is cool. So again, here's the pinata. And yes, the colors are very, very vivid, Bernie. You're right. So you get, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, and white. Does that sound right? Three, six, seven, eight. I'm missing one. Does gold come with it? I think gold even comes with that. I think gold comes with that. I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway. Moving on. Okay. Hi, sunshine. Yay, Jody did get a scan and cut. <laughs> Hello, Suzette. 
The, and you can buy single colors of these. Go online. You can buy. There are quite a few retailers that sell these in single colors because I purchased. I think gold comes with it. I purchased a brass. So you can buy single colors of these, which is really nice as well. Okay. And I, I think in terms of price point, they're pretty inexpensive in my my opinion and these are all my own opinions i am not sponsored by any of these companies okay tim holtz the man the kingdom all belongs to him you get these cool you can buy these cute storage trays all of the other inks do fit in here so i do kind of mix up my special ones and put them in here which would be white gold brass i don't know so the little storage tray you can get from Tim Holtz. I do like these. Keep everything nice and neat. I probably need to buy another one. You can pick them up, I think, at Hobby Lobby. Um, Tim Holtz's alcohol inks you can buy in a three-pack. He brought out some new ones last year, two years ago, which are these alcohol pearls, which have a little bit of mica in them, which are kind of cool. And then he has mixatives, so you can get white, silver, gold, um, pearl, you know, so you can get those. And he brought out the new alloys, which I don't have yet. So Tim Holtz, if you want a, if you want the whole rainbow and every shade and every color, then you want Tim Holtz because he has everything. The dropper bottles are the same half an ounce and their nozzles are very fine. So you can have a little bit more control on the Tim Holtz ones versus the pinata. These are also known as Ranger alcohol inks or Adirondack alcohol inks. Um, he used to put the colors of them on there. I don't know if he still does. Yeah, there's still names of colors on there. Um, but in terms of accessibility, a lot. Okay, so price point wise, they are a little more expensive because you can buy them in a three pack or you can buy them individually. But you get a bigger rainbow of colors with the Tim Holtz half an ounce. Now, he also sells his own, there's an echo there his own Yupo paper, which I'm gonna show you guys. He has a variety of supplies you can get with any to use with any of your alcohol inks. This little um, air blower thing has been a really cool accessory for me. I'm glad that I got it. You can get these alcohol brushes. Now, alcohol brushes are designed specifically for alcohol inks because they will not dry out. If you use a regular brush, these are synthetic brushes, they will not dry out from the use of alcohol, so I do recommend them. It's not like a regular paintbrush. What will happen with a regular paintbrush is they will dry out and then the, the fibers will start to come out of the brushes. So I do recommend those. And um, the blending pen is really cool because you can put your blending solution in there. And of course, blending solution just kind of is basically denatured alcohol. If you go to the hardware store, your husband probably has this in the garage. Denatured alcohol is what uh, blending solution is. You can also use this with isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol you can put in little squirt bottles. Do not, once again, do not put blending solution do not put this in a alcohol bottle because this has a, a resin built into it to kind of help everything lock in place so do not put this in a um in a spray bottle okay and i would suggest wearing gloves maybe a mask if you're sensitive to smells um, and then he also has uh, alcohol lift ink, which you've guys seen me have used a couple times. The alcohol lift ink, when you buy it, you definitely need to buy a reinker with it. You do not want to buy this without the reinker because um, what this does is it lifts that alcohol ink and makes some really cool resist kind of techniques with it. But you definitely need an inker with that. Okay, so all of the Tim Holtz accessories you can use with any alcohol inks, just so you know. But he is the godfather of alcohol inks for sure. So if you're looking for accessories, he a man, right? Okay, moving on. The Spectrum Noir inks, what I want to say about them. All right. Okay, the Spectrum Noir inks came with the ink colors, which I said were 12, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. Okay, 12 colors. I also purchased the um, Yupo Paper and Spectrum Noir Blender, which 
I must have been confused when I read it because I'm pretty sure I read it as blending solution. And it's it's not blending solution. And I will show that to you guys in here in a second. Okay. Um, what I do like is they did come packaged very nicely. I will say that. You get a lot. I mean, look at the comparison here. Remember we said the Tim Holtz and the Pinata inks are a half an ounce. You are getting one fluid ounce. So you're getting double the ink in the Spectrum Noir. So that's a benefit. You're getting an extra ounce. Another benefit is, again, you can refill your markers if you have the coordinating colors. You just want to take the nib out of the fat side here. Pull that out with some tweezers. Very carefully put a couple drops in and then let your marker set to soak that in. Um... Oh, by the way, I was told if you're going to refill your markers, make sure you uncap both ends when you refill it. Because if you refill, if you if you put the ink in, it doesn't go all the way down. And it's, I guess because of air pressure, um, that little air bubble in there doesn't allow your ink to flow. So if you're going to refill it, take that off, put a couple drops in and let it flow down before you put your lids back on. Um... The other cool thing is the the way that they have the... Okay, this is really annoying, the little tags here. All right, okay, I know it's flammable. I know I shouldn't be breathing this in, but that's on every single one. Um, they have little dropper um, things here. So, whoops, as I drop, make a mess. That was really cool too. So that's going to make it really easy to refill. What the heck? Look at me making a mess already. This is going to make it really easy to refill your markers, this little dropper. But I like the little dropper because, again, you can control the flow of what's coming out of here. Okay? Now, all of these have an odor. They smell like alcohol. If you're sensitive to smells, you know, do this in a well-ventilated area. Okay? Um, and I'm making a big mess everywhere. All right. Um... I forgot to add, there is another uh, person, Bria Reese. I only have a couple of hers. Bria Reese is now in Target. She's in Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can go online. She sells little more than half an ounce. Hers are 0.68 ounces. She is a mixed media artist who specializes in um, watercoloring, alcohol inks. Um, I think she does resin projects as well. She's fairly new to the market as far as I know, but she has a lot of bright, vibrant colors you can buy individually. And hers also have this kind of, um, wide nozzle. So again, a lot comes out. So kind of like the pinatas, but you can pick these up, um, at Hobby Lobby, Target, now, I will warn you, she sells two kinds of inks. She sells a watercolor ink and an alcohol ink. They look identical. The stores put them right next to each other. So when you go to purchase the inks, make sure you read the ink bottle because you will not know the difference when you get home. You're going to open it and go, oh, this is watercolor ink. This isn't what I wanted. So make sure you are reading the bottle and it says alcohol ink. Oh, that's cool, Sparkle Miss. I'll have to look into that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know he came out with some new stuff. I didn't get them yet. So uh, a lot, um, a lot of m companies on the market right now offering alcohol inks is what is what I want to say. All right, let's talk about this blender solution. So again, I may have misread it, but when I bought this off of HSN, I thought it said blending solution. A little tricky. This blender solution is not, I repeat, is not the same as Tim Holtz's blending solution, okay? So blending solution is, got a resin built into it, okay? Is designed to move your alcohol inks around. Um, and, oh man, you guys, I'm gonna have to look these up now, Marabou inks. Um, 
but it has like again it has this resin into it you can tell from looking at it that the consistency is slightly thicker it does have a little bit of a, a creamy tint to it so you can see that it has something in there this blender solution this is what goes in your clear blending markers haha -ha, hsn got me so in your copic zero in your god i got a couple of them in your blending marker, when you're coloring, that's what this is. It is not the same as blending solution. So just thought you guys would like to know that because Nancy did not know that. <laughs> but um, like I said, this is basically the same as denatured alcohol. So if you run out of blending blender, clear blender, a colorless blender, then you can use denatured alcohol. I have done that. But this does have a, a resin built into it. The uh, Tim Holtz's blending solution does have a resin built into it. I'll say that. Okay. Bye, Mary. Be careful. That's exactly what it is. It's Copic Zero. Yep. Yeah, blending versus blender. Yeah, I didn't, Sunshine, I didn't know until I got here. <laughs> when do you use alcohol inks versus watercolor pigmenting? Deidre, it's just a matter of taste. Um, alcohol inks are very bright, vibrant. They're very permanent. We're going to play around with them here in a second so I can show you the difference. You could essentially do the same thing with watercolors. You can do this essentially the same thing. Um with um ink refill refill ink refill re-inkers i can't speak re-inkers okay but the fun with alcohol inks is they do some cool stuff and they're permanent especially on what's called yupo paper so let's talk about yupo paper for a second what is yupo paper yupo paper is not even paper <laughs> okay let me move some of this off the desk all right Okay, so this company, I believe, is the original Yupo, okay? Yupo is plastic. It's plastic, guys. So it's um, suitable for mixed media, alcohol inks, a lot of watercolor people like to use this because... Since it's not water, it's 100% polypropylene, smooth, acid-free. Um, this is 10 sheets that I believe I picked up at Blick Art Store. And they are 9 by 11 sheets. I think they're 9 by 11. You cannot, oh, 9 by 12. You cannot rip this because this is not paper. It's plastic. So I'm going to take a piece of this out. Actually, I'm almost done here. Now, when you store this... Very important, you keep this in a dust-free environment. You wanna keep it in the package. You wanna keep all of these uh, dust-free, fingerprint-free because it, that can affect how the paper reacts. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Let me move some stuff around here. Now, if you go back and watch, I've done a couple of videos with um, using Yupo paper. It's just a different medium. It's just fun. And it's, like I said, the, the texture is cool because it's ultra smooth. It's plastic. It's not made out of paper. You can cut it. So I am going to cut these down. If I can get it in my trimmer. I do not recommend heating it uh, because it will melt. Again, it's plastic. It's super smooth to cut. It's a cool texture because it's super smooth. Um, you have to use specific kinds of ink on here because it's plastic. It doesn't absorb, so it takes a while for it to dry. That's why we like to use alcohol inks on it because alcohol inks dry very quickly. They evaporate quickly. So smooth like butter, but, and I'm just cutting these down to five by three and three quarters. So 
So last year I made Leah a lunch bracelet. And what I did was I took a piece of Yupo, I put some Velcro on it, and I put some colors on it, and I put her lunch bracelet number on there because I knew she couldn't destroy it. So let me just show you. So this is a piece, right? You cannot rip it. It's plastic. You cannot rip it, you guys. All right? What you can do is you can cut it. It will cut. It will die cut. But you cannot rip it, and it's permanent. Okay? Um, let me show you how these inks react to it. Now, sometimes Yupo gets dusty, it gets staticky, it gets fingerprints on it. It doesn't react the same. But I want to show you a sample here of how each of these inks uh, reacts on it. So I'm going to start with um, Piñata. Yes, great for making stencils. Thank you, Stacy. So you can see the Piñata again will react and that's what you want to see you want to see when your ink hits that yupo it starts to bloom or spread okay um let me grab this spectrum noir one let's grab a darker color and as it's blooming and spreading it's also drying and it's going to get kind of tacky and sticky Okay, so notice the difference already with the Spectrum Noir markers, and this is the issue I had with it yesterday. I'm going to kind of leave these out. Can you guys see okay? Uh, this one is Bria Reese. Hello, Jeanette. <clears throat> um, let me grab the Copic. Okay, so we have Pinata Alcohol Inks, Spectrum Noir, Bria Reese, Copix, and we need Tim Holtz. Where you at, homie? Are you guys noticing a difference already? Because, yeah, was not happy to see what I'm not seeing yesterday. And I'm going to do Tim Holtz up here in the corner. And, of course. I took a nap today, Tracy. The HVAC guy, oh, Nancy's life again. So the HVAC guy came to do regular maintenance on my HVAC and told me I need a new fan in my air conditioning system. So more home ownership fun. All right. Anyway, so I want you guys to see something. The Pinata inks, the alcohol inks, the Bria Reese alcohol inks, and the Copic inks all bloomed and spread on that Yupo paper. Okay, <laughs> these brand new Spectrum Noir alcohol inks did not. And I'm kind of, I'll be honest with you, I feel misled. I feel like when they packaged these alcohol inks with Yupo paper with their, their blender solution, I think they kind of were trying to lead us down the path as, oh, it's just as good as Tim Holtz. No, e HVAC. <laughs> no, HVAC. Right? So I'm feeling a little bamboozled at this point now. Again, I did not watch the video on HSN, so I don't know if they made any claims or not. But the packaging implied to me, oh, Spectrum Noir alcohol ink, Spectrum Noir Yupo paper, Spectrum Noir blender solution, right? And then 
look, right? So this kind of irritated me. So when I did my sample yesterday, this is the sample. They did not work. Okay, so I ended up going in. I only use the Spectrum Noir inks on here. This is on their Yupo paper. And at first I thought it was the paper, you guys, which is why I kind of did this experiment right now because I was like, maybe it was the paper because that does happen sometimes. Now I realize it was the inks. So I just went in and squirted the crap out of them. And I went in and I did their blender solution against blending solution. Big difference there too. So let me show you guys that. So we'll pull this other scrap piece out. So comparing again, I'm just gonna compare Tim Holtz and um, theirs. Where's this guy from here? Okay. So we're going to do one side with blender solution <laughs> and one side with blending solution. I-N-G versus E-R. All right, so I'm going to put the inks down. Exactly, they're marker refills. I think you're right, Bernie. All right, so on this side, I'm going to put a drop of... Ranger alcohol ink on both sides. This is Tim Holtz Flamingo. I love this color. See it blooming already. Next to it, I'm going to do the Spectrum Noir. Okay, and once again, just sitting there. And I'm gonna do alcohol blending solution on this side, and you will see as soon as I put it in, one drop, you can see immediately it starts to push that out. Look at the Tim Holtz ink pushing away and moving. The <laughs> Spectrum Noir ink ate it. <laughs> it absorbed it. Okay, now on this side, I'm going to use their blender solution. Tracy, you're going to love it. It's addicting, Tracy. Okay, now, their blender solution does push. You can see it pushing there. Um, but it'll go so far and it will stop. Not like Tim Holtz's blending solution. Tim Holtz's blending solution just continues to, to move and bloom. So, um, And you can see it did nothing over here. So there is definitely something in Tim Holtz's blending solution, which makes it far superior. Now, this is what I got yesterday on my sheet. I got a bunch of blobs of ink, and I was like, crap, what do I do with this? So um, all I did was just kind of push them around. So you can get results here pushing them around. So if you do have these or you did purchase them, you can use them. It's just going to be a lot more work using them. That's that's the only difference. And yeah, I'm going to just basically look at them as marker refills. That's what they are. I mean, they're not Copic quality, but not, I don't think anything's going to be Copic quality. And they can't even compare as a cheaper price point to Tim Holtz. I would say if you're going to spend your money, buy the pinata inks because you get nine colors of the pinata inks for $25 or whatever it was. I think I spent $80 on those refills, you guys. Try putting blender solution and then the color. No problem. Okay, so let me pull out one of these. So what we normally do is we put down some blending solution. I'm going to do the blender solution. And then we put the inks down and then it kind of moves. So I'm just going to do, I do like this little dropper system. I will say that's pretty cool. I like you get a fluid ounce of ink, but the fact that they don't move, I'm going to even try a different color. Let's do, uh, there's no names, BP2, blood pressure 2. And I'm putting it on top of the blender solution and... This is the uh, fat girl at the gym, uh, Nancy version alcohol ink. It ain't running nowhere, honey. It is staying there. OK. 
Okay. <laughs> this is this is the this is just and you can see it just sits there. It doesn't move unless you move it. It's just for markers. Can you use it? You can use it. Would I recommend it? Not na not Nancy Stamps recommended. Now, let's just have a little bit of fun here. Let's add some of that Tim Holtz on top of that. That blender solution, look, it just sits there. Now over here, there was no blender solution. Look at that ink run. Run, Forrest, run! Over here, it just absorbed it. That blender solution, just use it to put in your marker, in your, in your, in your Copic marker. It does not move. So this stuff, put it in with the markers. That's all it's good for. You do get dizzy. They do smell. Um, let me grab some. Let's put some. Let's put some pinata purple ink in here just to liven this up a little bit. Look at that. Bloop. 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 So you can use it if you have a tool and you want to blow on it, but I like to see my inks kind of naturally move on their own a little bit before I start pushing the air around, right? And you can see when that air, when it stops moving, it stops moving. So this is going to give you heavy blobs of color. Um, if you're going to try to do the foil technique, the foil technique does work because I did it on yesterday's art piece. However, this ink is going to stay sticky. So remember that this is going to take quite a while to dry because it's very thick. Um, the viscosity is thicker and it's just not as, I would say, reach for pinatas, Tim Holtz, or even Bria Reese before buying this stuff for alcohol inks. All right, so I'm going to move this one aside. Still very pretty, but I'm going to scoop it up here. I'll set it on the back mat to dry off. And it's going to take a while to dry, and all of that alcohol ink is going to seep underneath it. See that? So I have a little alcohol mat behind me that I'm going to use to dry it off. Clean up, you can still clean up with alcohol. Now I'm going to show you that again on Yupo paper using the other inks. Hey, Karen. Well, that's what happened yesterday is I had ink all over my hands, so today I was like, oh, better wear gloves. All right, so I'm going to remove the Spectrum Noir from the table here for a second. Okay, now let's try out their Yupo paper, okay? Taking the inks out of it, because I really thought it was the Yupo paper yesterday. You get 20 sheets of Yupo paper in here, but again, they sell this 5x7 with the blender solution. Uh, I'm going to say it's overpriced. And uh, you can go buy Tim Holtz blender paper. It's 5x7. I think you get 10 sheets. Hold on. Tim Holtz is 5x7. 10 sheets. It says $10, but we all know Hobby Lobby, uh, Lobby gives us a 40 to 60% off coupon. So maybe you spend six bucks, okay? Or I got this big pack, I want to say for under $20. And you get way more on this big pack. I, I would say buy this. This is going to go a lot further for you. Okay, so this is their Spectrum Noir Yupo, but I think it is, it's Yupo paper just marketed under them. Yeah, always foil the sticky areas, of course. I did do that on the butterfly card yesterday. All right, so I'm just going to use pinata inks because they're all open, and my Tim Holtz inks, they're kind of under other stuff here. Or I'll try to mix it up again. I 
kind of like that pinky background. It's very vibrant. Let's let's stay with that. So, Pinata Magenta. I am going to order. Look at that move right away. I am going to order the um, alloys. Yeah, you just want to make sure that it's heavy enough. This Yupo paper says the weight is. 200 GSM, so, oops, what is that? Is that about, I don't know. This is pretty good. They, 74 pounds is 200 GSM, and it's the exact same from the big piece I cut up to the small piece. So I believe this is genuine Yupo Yupo paper as the brand. Um, oh, let's do some blending solution here before this starts to dry. And I'm going to do some more Tim Holtz Flamingo. We're just doing this hot pink, pinky background here. Now, I will say, if you're doing this method and you want to add mixatives or you want to add the white, anything that has anything mixed into it, for example, the pearl inks, I'll show you here. They don't like to move. So anything that has a mixative in it, the gold, the silver, the pearl, the pearl inks. Um, those those alcohol inks, because they have a mixative in them, they don't like to go anywhere. So don't be disappointed when you grab your mixatives and put those in there. They're just kind of like, they just want to sit there. And it's because the mixative makes them so heavy. See, because they can't evaporate as quickly, they don't move. So this one is uh, Enchanted, which is a pink. They're pretty, but they just need some help moving around. So you'll see when I add this. So you can see the ink there. You can see the shimmer there, but it really doesn't want to go anywhere. It's really hard to bloom. You just put a little bit of blending solution in there and then take your air tool to it and your air puffer. And it will move. It's a little slow to move, but it will move. I mean, if you want all that shimmer and shine and all that good stuff in there. You see how quickly that dried. So anytime you want to reactivate, that's what's fun about alcohol inks on this Yupo paper is, again, you're on a plastic canvas. That means you keep playing and moving things around until you're happy. If you don't like it, guess what? You can almost erase the whole thing. So we did a lot with alcohol inks a couple weeks back um, where we, we, we did some scenery stamps. We did... Um, those foiling on there to make those um, seahorse backgrounds. So a lot of fun with this. Someone said, what's the difference with using alcohol inks and watercolor inks and dye inks is because um, alcohol inks on this plastic paper, it doesn't get absorbed, gives you a lot more playtime, a lot of freedom. And it's very freeing because you're not, you're going to be um, very random. There's no two things that are going to look the same. Okay. And then, of course, my favorite part, let me grab a piece of foil. Ouch. I'm going to move this around a little bit more because I see too many circles on there. And you can use isopropyl alcohol as well. You get a little bit of a different look, but you can use isopropyl alcohol. Um, where's my little spray bottle? You can use those. So there you can see the isopropyl alcohol breaks it up and moves it like it moves it around like that. But again, it, it evaporates very quickly. Okay. And then, like I said, one of my favorite techniques is you take a piece of foil, any foil, it doesn't matter if it's hot foil or regular foil, any foil before this dries completely. So it's kind of in this tacky area where it's not fully evaporated. It's a little sticky and you can go in with any foil 
and that foil will stick to those tacky areas. It just gives it a really cool textured effect, kind of like some marbling. The tackier it is, the more it's gonna stick. The drier it is, the less it's gonna stick. And then you can die cut shapes with this. You can use it as a background. You can hot foil on top of this. Okay. But you can see there's definitely more movement using the other alcohol inks instead of those inks. So now I can die cut some flowers out of here or I can just make it a background and put a simple sentiment on there. or stamp on it. Now, if you're going to stamp on it, you want to use like a stays on ink or an archival ink. Stamping on this is a little difficult because, and I'll show you yesterday's project. Um, when you stamp on it, you it, it it's hard for it to adhere because again, this, this alcohol ink is just basically sitting on top of this paper. It's not soaked into the paper. So it lifts. So when you go to stamp on it, it's a little difficult. So you want to use a stamp positioning tool. And I'll just show you on our little sample here. Okay, so this is the one that I did yesterday and I stamped this like five times guys I refilled my archival ink and just kept stamping and stamping away but you can see it just kind of started to lift in some areas so you're gonna get a grungy kind of look to it okay so cool Stacy Oh, okay, Denise, I didn't know that. Um, she says, lay your alcohol inks on their side. Okay. Oh, Denise says she does. Stacy says she doesn't think that applies to alcohol inks. Okay, somebody's going to have to look that up. Uh, photo paper does work. Let me grab a piece of photo paper and show you. It's a little different. Hold on. Photo paper does absorb, okay? Photo paper is paper, but there's a coating... So I'm going to use glossy cardstock because that's what you mean. It's right. It's pretty much the same as photo paper. So um, with photo paper, it's going to be, you're going to have some of the same results, but different because this is a coating on top of regular paper. So the alcohol ink does soak into this. And when it says soaks in, like that's it. You, you have very little play time with this. You have much more play time with the, um, with the uh, Upo paper. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. Let me pour some blending solution down. And we'll do some blues. See, it's already starting to soak into that glossy cardstock. So you get a little bit of blooming, but you can see it's starting to soak into the cardstock. So you have a little bit of time, but um, it's already starting to kind of soak in there. And once that's set, you, you cannot reactivate and move this. And I'll show you that. What the heck was that? Something just fell down, and it was a loud bang. It sounded like somebody threw a snowball at my house. That was weird. All right, so there you can see it's reactivated. Let me grab some lighter blue inks here. Oh. You do got to be ready on the glossy paper, the photo paper, because it, it just moves quickly. So, so 
So you can get some pretty cool effects if you move pretty quick. Not exactly the same as Yupo, but still cool. I'm going to spray this with alcohol and see what we get here. So the alcohol does the same kind of thing, just kind of lifts it, moves it. But again, just in terms of drying time, it's way quicker on this paper. And it will permanently stain the paper. So if you don't like it, you're kind of stuck with it. You can't really, you can't reactivate it and move it around like you can with the... Um, Yupo. I love doing the blue, like the oceany scenes because you know, when you're looking at this background and the way the water kind of, or the alcohol inks kind of move and flow, to me it looks, it reminds me of water. So I think it looks cool to do kind of a oceany look to it. Now let's see here. This is starting to dry and get tacky. It's still too wet yet. dry so quick that sh very short window to do the foiling. It does work if you can get to it fast enough. So just a little bit of a different look. But experiment, experiment for yourself. See what you get. Now someone asked, is hot foiling... It, would it melt? Okay, so here's the thing with hot foiling, and if you saw my um, seahorse video, yes, when you're going to do hot foiling, at this point, I am going to recommend, sorry guys, but I am going to recommend this, um, the, um, can't speak, foil, the Gemini foil press over the spell binders, because the Gemini foil press, you can, oh, I can't wait to get those alloys. The Gemini foil press, you would use a low heat setting, and it's 15 seconds. So you're on, 15 seconds, you're off. So because it's such a short window for that foil to stick, it just is a lot easier to get the hot foiling. Now, I have not tried this with Spellbinders Glimmer yet. I guess I could do that experiment for you guys. I have a feeling putting it in the Spellbinders Glimmer, it's going to... Uh, it's going to kind of melt this, you know, and it's just going to give it too soft. So I, you know, I've used both of them. You guys know I have both machines. Gemini Foil Press, to me, is just a little bit of a better advantage over that on this one. Uh, yeah, Tracy, I use both. So I have isopropyl alcohol in a bottle here, and it's 91%, and I have it in this spray squirter. So it does move the alcohol. The, I, the alcohol is... Um, how can I say this? Um, a little heavier than this blending solution. So the alcohol, when it sprays, it kind of bubbles up and um, pools, as you can see here. See those little white spots and those little white bubbles there? So that's what the isopropyl does. It doesn't um, move as much as the blending solution does, but I use both interchangeably, yes. So, for instance, let me add some bubbles here. This is isopropyl alcohol in this sprayer. You do not want to put um, blending solution in a sprayer. Well, this is pretty much, it's not going to move now because it's set in there. So a lot of different things you can do. I'm trying to go back and read your questions here.
Yeah, anything non-porous it's going to work on. So, I mean, the biggest difference, let me show you guys here. Here is a drop of alcohol. And it blooms right away. And here is blending solution. Put it over here. The blending solution, I think it's just a stronger, there's something in there that's just stronger. Blending solution is continuing to move and bloom. Alcohol goes so far, um, but they both work. You can use either one. So I'll do, let me do another piece of paper here because I got a couple here. Um... Here's another piece. We'll do this one with alcohol first. Let's do some greens. I have my inks out here. So this is 91% isopropyl alcohol, which, you know, you're not allowed to be using crafting right now. You're supposed to be making hand sanitizer, guys. Save your lives. Ooh, what's going on there? Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, why didn't it move? It's because we're using alcohol, Nance. See how the alcohol just kind of swallows it. The alcohol doesn't have as much movement as blending solution. It's an ugly green. Let's do some pretty greens. Oh, he did? I missed that, Jody. Yeah, he's the man. Is that what the secret ingredient is? Anne Marie says if you mix your alcohol with like a drop of glycerin, that's what makes the blending solution. I'm going to do this kind of green leafy background and move this around, see what we can get. Maybe we can cut some leaves out of it. That's pretty. my finger in there and it had a little blue on it. And I've seen people use a hair dryer. I wouldn't recommend your heat tool because the heat tool gets very hot and this is probably very flammable. <laughs> but I've seen people use a hair dryer to blow their inks around too. Or your heat tool on uh, low if you can do it like on a cool setting. Ooh, that's very pretty. This is Yupo paper, but I did do the glossy side of photo paper, yes. Glossy cardstock. So this is the green. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit darker green to this. Just in a couple spots here. Drip. And I'm going to use a little bit blending solution to move that. Oops. A little spray there. Michael, 60% off coupons. You go, girl. Yes, we love deals. I like going to the stamp shows because a lot of times you can get um, companies like Gary Berlin. Um, they do like buy four, you get one free or something like that. Um, so I like watching or going to the stamp shows and then you get to, you get to see them swatched out and stuff because... You know, when you get when you buy it online, unless you really have an idea, it's hard to tell really what how that color is going to come out. I think this will be cool to do leaves on there. Let me move some of these out of the way. So we have pink and purple, we have blue, we have pink, we have green, 
How about a yellow? Watch Tim Saturday comment. It is color old tables where he liked the comment. Someone like this user to read all those comments. Um, yeah, he has his partner Mario. Uh, Mario runs the computer, so Mario reads all the comments and um, comments and thumbs up and all that stuff. We don't have stamp shows here. I'm sorry, Kim. Another reason for you to come visit me, Kim. All right, so this time I'm gonna start with blending solution instead of alcohol. This is dandelion. Oh my gosh. I don't know what this one is. Ooh, it's a little darker. It's like honey. Uh, hmm. I need like a lemon yellow. I don't have a, a lemon yellow. This would be cool to like get some nice golden colors down and then do, um, where's my pinata? Do um, sun bright yellow. Um, die cut like a sun, like sunflower petals. That would be pretty. So that's the pinata sun bright yellow. So that, and they mix and match and play well. You don't have to have all, again, one brand. Now, so it's kind of stopped moving here. I just add a little bit more blending solution, let that loosen it up, and then go back to blowing it around. Oh, that would be cool. A honeycomb background. I don't know if I have one of those, but now I'm going to need it. I'm sure I have something close. I'll look. Yes, bees are a big thing. That's right. That's like really cool. That would look like honey. Oh, you guys are geniuses. And you have the blending pen. So the blending pen gives you more precise movement. You have, uh, let me show you that. So the blending pen, you just fill it with, it comes empty, you fill it with blending solution. It has a thicker end and a thinner end, but you can go in there and say, you know, you don't like how this looks, you want it to be more organic, you can go in with the blending pen, move that around a little bit, or you wanna draw, like I did one where I like, I drew a little, little moon outline, and then you just take a paper towel and kind of rub that off. Basically it turns into a colored alcohol marker. Um, but you just clean that up. Um, the paint brushes do the same thing. Just go in there with the paint brushes and paint whatever you want to paint. What, Stacy? I would love to go. I'm going to, that's like on my like dream list. Like one of these days, I'm going to get in and be able to go to that. So here I just use a little alcohol, put it on the brush, got some little splatter spots on there. That's pretty cool. And everything's pretty easy to clean up. Yes, it does stain. Um... You just use 91% alcohol. You can see I just put a little blob down here and just keep rinsing my brush out until it rinses out clean. And then I just have a paper towel to dry that off. Same thing with my uh, blending solution. You just kind of draw with it until it draws out clean. The 
regular piece of cardstock here. So now it's the tip is clean again, so it's very easy to clean up. And then as far as your work area, same thing. Now, the alcohol ink does normally seep underneath, so I like this non-stick mat. Any kind of silicone mat will work. And then to set that aside to dry, I put a little couple drops of alcohol down and clean that up. I use the alcohol for cleanup because alcohol is, what, a dollar? When we're done with this pandemic, it'll, it'll be a dollar again. And the higher your concentration of alcohol, 91 or 99% alcohol works well, but 70% alcohol works just as well. Um, I, I try to save my blending solution for actually, to, you know, moving my inks around on my page. Okay, we got one more here. Let's do, how about we do some like grays and blacks and metallics? Hello, Charles. Yeah, Creativation is only for people that are, um, right, it's for people that are in the industry. It's basically a big, um, yeah, some people use hand sanitizer for cleaning up. But Creativation is a big way for new, for companies to market their new materials. So, here's a piece of acetate. We can play with this. Um, you know, when they're bringing out new things, but if you're, if you're like a demo for some stamp companies and they pay, I mean, they pay, I think they pay thousands of dollars to get into this thing. I don't know, but you know, say, say if I were to go with like kitchen sink stamps and kitchen sink stamps has a booth up, um, I could go. I'm going to do some grays and silvers and black and see how this works out. Where's my, do I have a silver? Rose gold, copper. I have gun metal. Here we go. Here's a silver mix it of some grays. Oh, here's a, here's a gray. some grays and blacks. I don't know how this is going to come out. Let me shake up my mixatives here. I know! Blue Night Rubber Stamps. <laughs> oh, Jody, you're so lucky. Yeah, Tim Holtz does live in Arizona, I think. I don't know where. Yeah. Well, she asked me if I wanted to do stamp. What's that called? Stamp. Uh, whatever one they do in the summertime out there. Yeah, but Nancy doesn't want to pay. Like, Nancy wants somebody else to pay. I don't have anything to sell. I'm just selling my friendship to you guys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't make any money. <laughs> yep, Tracy's right. Trade show for the crafting world. Stacy, you stalker, you. Hmm. Um, what's it called? Stamp Junkie Fest. That's the one I was invited to go to, but then all of this happened. Hey, Melody. I love Stacy's address. She lives in surprise. No, I think Tim Holtz is in Arizona. He always shows, like, outside his window that he's in Arizona. Oh, that's cool, Jody. Come on. All right. The mixative is not mixing as well as I would like, but that's okay. I'm going to start with blending solution. This one's going to be a little weird. Start with a little blending solution. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with this Adirondack silver mixative, which I don't think is going to move very much. So we'll just do a couple blocks. Yeah, not move at all. 
couple blobs of that, couple blobs of Bria Reese slate. Whoa. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, alcohol inks, Ranger slate. Let's see if it's the same color or a different color. Okay, Rangers is a warm, is a warm, like a brownish gray, and Bria Reese is a cool blue gray. So they are two different colors. I'm gonna add a drop of black from Pinata, just a little bit, and some Smolder, which is a mix it up. Oh, that's kind of like a gunmetal. Weird. All right, then I'm going to go in with this piece of acetate and smush, smush, smush it all. Oh, too many mixatives in there. You should not have smushing. Oh, that looks awful. Don't do this. It's fun, but it looks terrible because the mixatives are not moving. Okay, scratch that. <laughs> Back to the blending solution and, and there we go. I mean, smush method looks cool if you're into that. I kind of like this. Now, now I like the smush method better. I'm going back to smush. Going back to smush. Who's texting me? Stop. Oh my God, I would love a ranger. If it, you guys write that in. Call everybody write Ranger and say, you got to have Nance. Because Ranger's in New Jersey, which is like the next state over from me, you guys. Oh, my God. I would go crazy if I got a Ranger affiliation. I was like peeing my pants yesterday when I saw that I got the Hero Arts affiliation. Oh, my God. All my money's going to go to them, you guys. This is a hot mess. Add purple. You know, I was thinking the same thing, Anne-Marie, but I wanted this to be kind of like I was thinking masculine, you know. Um, what's that thing you guys wanted me to do with the rabbit? What were we calling that? This is kind of cool. It's kind of marbly looking. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. That's not bad. But then you could use this acetate if you wanted to. You let that dry. Jody, my affiliate link is on our Facebook page. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Bernie. It just got approved, so I can use their link for purchasing. Um... And I get a small credit from them. But I don't know if they're going to send me stuff. I think they want to see. Yeah, Trace, I posted it last night. I got uh, Hero Arts approved for an affiliate link. This is cool now that I look at it. It kind of looks kind of marbly, very masculine looking. It's cool. Could die cut some gears out of there. I know, Kim. Nancy was like, what? Since here are arts have a credit card. <laughs> Just kidding. No, really, do they? <laughs> so even this acetate, we can clean the acetate off. Let me show you what you guys can do. So this is non-porous. And this is just from a stamp package. Actually, this is the back side of the butterfly stamp package. And it just, using a little bit of alcohol, it wipes right off. See, it's like it never happened. So, you could use acetate if you like that effect. It's like that, um... Mercury glass acetate that Stampin' Up! selling right now on sale. Check out Nancy, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. <laughs> yeah, Stacy, you missed it yesterday. I got furloughed, so I had to come on and tell everybody you guys are stuck with me for a little while longer. But I got work to do around the house because I got new doors to put in. My house is starting to give me issues. It's um, 18 years old, so it's normal maintenance stuff. Like, I need two new doors. Now the HVAC system needs a new fan. 
so can't go without air conditioning. If you guys like Honeybee, you can check out, um, me and Tracy both have a link to, um, yeah, Sunshine, don't do the straw. It's not good for you. Get this. It's worth it. It's a lot easier, and you're not breathing in those fumes. Um, but Tracy and I are part of the Not Too Shabby shop, and she has a lot of hero, or she has some hero art. She has um, Honeybee. Hero Arts monthly kits are $34.99, and you get so much out of them. I love the Hero Arts kits. Yep. Bye, Sparkle Miss. Um, Pinata and Ranger inks are a different company, but they're very similar. Yeah, I saw the Honey Bee new release. Yeah, I got furloughed yesterday, Jan. Uh, I am for two weeks until May 4th, so my ex-husband has agreed to come over and help me do some stuff around the house. He does, like, construction stuff, so, um, yeah, sunshine, you are feeling great right now, honey, because you're breathing in all this alcohol. Bless her. They even tell you all over the bottles, like, do it in a, well, so you get this thing. This thing is cool. It's like, and I've been ordering a lot from scrapbook.com, guys. Dude, their stuff comes quick for me. So let's see the backgrounds we made. Now, this one I didn't put any foil on because I kind of like this. It's hard to see, but it, it does have that metallic in there. Do you guys see that? Thank you, Deb. You're a sweetheart. I really do appreciate when you guys contribute. I didn't even know that what, what that was. And I said to my sister, I'm like, what is that? She goes, people send you money. And I go, what? <laughs> This is the pink one that we did with the foiling on top. Okay. Or if you have like one of those air 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 airbrush guns, that'll work too. That's right, Sunshine. Nancy is basically laid off for two weeks. No pay. No money, honey. This was on the photo paper, which still looks cool. This one, I really like the yellows, although I'm kind of partial to yellow. Okay, here's the green. I want to die cut flowers out of these. And this one still has not dried yet. And this was using their, this was the one using their blender solution, right? Oh, it's all sticky. Maybe it's dry and it just doesn't look dry. No, it's not dry yet. Hold on. Um, I did apply for unemployment, Jennifer, but I don't, yeah, I don't know what they're going to say because it's only two weeks. And I don't have any, they made us use our vacation time last week, so I don't have any vacation time left, so. I normally do this. This is like my go-to theme. Like, I always do blue, but I like all of these colors. I think they do look cool. And I think they'll look cool if I die cut, like, leaves and flowers and stuff out of them and then piece them together. I think that'll look cool. This one, that's where it's going to be. It is what it is. That's why it helps when you guys use the affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any money. So what affiliate links mean is that um, you saw whatever you purchased through me. So I kind of get like a referral for it. And it's not a lot, guys. I mean, it's a couple cents, a dollar here or there. But it adds up at the end of the month. Um, they give me store credit or they um, 
send me products or sometimes I'll get money sent to my PayPal account. And it, like I said, it doesn't usually add up to a lot. And usually when it's a store credit, you guys, I just go in and I buy more stuff. So when you guys see, like, I get stuff from Arteza, um, I just tell them, look, send me, send me this, send me paints or send me markers or whatever. So most of that stuff goes back into the channel, like this stuff, so you guys can see it. So I don't have an affiliate link with HSN, but I do have an affiliate link with Amazon and scrapbook.com and now Hero Arts. So when you guys use those links, and it's not just for me, it's all of the YouTubers out there and the bloggers. When you guys use their links, it doesn't cost you anything at all. They get credit. They get credit for you purchasing the product and then their manufacturer knows oh they watched it on nancy stamps that's cool so it helps to help me get more stuff for you guys and when i do have money like the hsn stuff i purchase that with my own money so i don't have an affiliate link with crafters companion or hsn but if it's a product i like like you guys know i love the foil press um so I'm, i always like to promote the foil press but i bought the spellbinders glimmer um, so you guys who don't have a Gemini machine can use that. And I bought these inks so we could try them out. And I don't think that I would recommend these inks. But, you know, so when you guys contribute, I, I really do appreciate it. It does help me a lot in keeping this channel going so I can get new products. So um, even when you guys give me like the 5 or $10 on here, that means so much to me, you guys. I really do appreciate that. Right. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Sunshine. Yeah, kitchen, um, kitchen sink stamps, all to new. Yeah, it's okay, Stace. Don't worry about it, hon. We'll make through it. I think at the end of this, this is how I feel, is that everybody's going to come out better for this as a country. I think we're going to be more united. I think families are going to be stronger, things they wanted to do in their life. They're going to realize, hey, I should just go for it. I should just do it. I think jobs are going to be more appreciative of their employees, and employees are going to be more appreciative of their jobs. And if you're in a situation where you are unhappy, and believe me, um, you I don't have the easiest life, but I don't have the worst life. I'm a single mom, but I do pretty well to take care of my kids. They both have very active fathers in their in their families. Um, like I said, my ex-husband is coming to help me fix some things around my house. So I have a very good relationship. I have a very good job. And even though I'm being furloughed for two weeks, there are companies out there that let their people go a long time ago that aren't giving their people benefits. Um, so I'm very thankful, but I know there are people that are reevaluating their life and their situations and... Um, you know, realizing, hey, I'm in a good spot or this is a job that maybe I need to look somewhere else in my life, right? So, um, like I said, I look at it as it's just money and as long as my children are happy and healthy and I get to come and spend an hour with you guys, I'm happy. This is my stress relief as much as it is for you guys and I truly appreciate all of your support, all of your messages, you guys are using the affiliate links. And it's the affiliate link, not the coupon code. The coupon code is for you guys. I don't get anything out of the coupon code. So you have to click on my link. When I put my link at the bottom of the video, and if you're not, if you don't see it on the video, go and check our Facebook page, um, either Nancy Stamps 15 or Foiling and Stamping Fun. And Tracy's affiliate links are on there. My affiliate links are on there. Um, anything we can do to help you guys out, we want to help you out. Yeah, Jen, maybe, you know, everything happens for a reason. Maybe this is just some reflection for you and you need to be like, I need to look somewhere else. And there are going to be companies that are going to want to scoop you up. I got very lucky my resume was on one of those websites and this my company called me and was like, hey, here's a job. We want you to do this, this, and this. And I was like, this is a joke, right? I didn't think it was a real job offer. So for my company, I mean, I took a pay cut from my old job for sure. But again, the time that I get to spend with my kids is so much worth it that I can do some budget cutbacks. Not a big deal for me. And I get to spend more time with you guys. 
Hi, Letitia. No, you guys are awesome. I wish I had an HSN affiliate. I don't. I still link, link things to HSN. I do not have an HSN affiliate. Um, Crafters Companion stuff, I get a lot of that from scrapbook.com or Craft Stash. I have a Craft Stash US and a Craft Stash UK link. So if you are overseas, um, my links, I'll, I'll link them again um, for you guys. But if you join our Facebook group, Foiling and Stamping Fun, and you go to the docs, you'll see docs there that say Nancy's design team and Tracy's design team and links. And you can go on there. And Tracy and I have some very different companies. So she has different companies than I have, depending on your style. Craft Stash does have great prices. They always have things on sale. Yeah, I have Craft Stash. And if there's a company that you guys want me to try to get on, like you guys said, Honeybee, I like to use, um, for Honeybee, I do like to use, um, um, Not Too Shabby Shop, but I can apply for Honeybee if they're on there. And remember, the more you guys like my videos, the more subscribers we have, the more that stands up for us as a group because you guys are part of this group. You guys take all the credit. I might be the ones with my ugly hands on the screen, but you guys are the ones emailing me. You guys are the one making the suggestions. You guys are the one asking questions. You guys participate and say, Nance, try this, try that. So this is as much about you guys as it is for me. When we have thumbs up, when we have videos that get more views, when we have more viewers, I can say to those companies, hey, I have almost 15,000 viewers. May I be an affiliate for your company and offer your products to my viewers? Right, Stacy? For sure. Have I ever used napkins in my mink? I have not, Jody. Jody, send me an email. That's one I'll put on the try list. I think what I'll do is I'll let these dry overnight and I'll save these for tomorrow. And I think for tomorrow's video, we will maybe do some hot foiling, maybe do some die cutting. How's that sound to you guys? So we'll carry this on to tomorrow. And we've been doing lives every night. So if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. You'll get a notification. And, um, you can, what were you guys saying? Thank you, Jen. Um, you guys will get a notification, um, when I post a video, but I have a lot of playlists because when I go back to work, it'll be back to two or three times a night and not as many lives. So right now, take advantage of me while you can send me emails of things you want to see. If I have it, I will try it for you. Nancy Stamps 15 at Gmail. Yes, and don't forget to subscribe to Tracy's. I don't know if you guys know this or not, because Tracy's really, really good. She's a really fast learner. Tracy's only been doing this for two years, Tracy. How long have you been doing this, hun? Just over two years. So I've been scrapbooking for 18 years. Tracy's only been doing this for two years, and she has come so far in her her learning process and her teaching process. And check out her videos, because I learn a lot from her as well. Thank you, Bernie. You guys are awesome. So check out Tracy as well. Yes, Mod Squad Challenge. Did you guys like the card? Somebody's getting that card in the mail. I don't know who's getting it in the mail, but one of you guys, I mailed it to somebody. <laughs> so somebody's going to be like, oh my gosh, this is the Mod Squad card. So you have two weeks to enter the Mod Squad, cha Mod Squad Challenge. You can win up a $25 gift card from Kitchen Sink Stamps because Kitchen Sink Stamps is my sponsor. And at the bottom of my video are the affiliate links for Kitchen Sink Stamps. And on the Mod Squad page is the discount code for Kitchen Sink Stamps. So, go check it out. 
check, check, check it out. Check, check, check it out. There's Tracy's channel. Yep, Tracy just linked her channel. And then if you like Stampin' Up! stuff, you know, I do dabble in the Stampin' Up! But Karen, uh, Karen on the Lake Stamper, Karen does some Stampin' Up! stuff. So if you're out in the Michigan area, that's where Karen is. Um, she can help you out too with some Stampin' Up! stuff. So, and if anybody else has a YouTube channel, you know, that you guys want to promote, you have links, you have a blog, go on our Facebook page, Foiling and Stamping Fun. Go on our page, and there's a, a document there where you can put your thing on there. Tracy did a butterfly card yesterday. I posted that, too. ModSquadChallenge.com. Here you go. ModSquadChallenge.com. Stampin' Up's new catalog is going to come out in June. Bernie, you're already on my list. You're going to get it mailed. I keep trying to talk Stacy in and get in the YouTube because Stacy's card is beautiful. Tracy, it says the link isn't available. Hold on. Oh, yeah, Tracy, your YouTube link didn't work. I think Tracy's stuff's on lockdown. She makes it all private. <laughs> okay, you guys, I got dishes to do. I'm going to go find me some cheesecake now. <laughs> oh, 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 before you guys log off. Did you guys get the email about Laura's retirement? <laughs> so she is retiring i think she has a date on there of may so get what you can get while you can get it if you want the foil stock up on it pretty soon she's gonna be offering the uh foil foil mega box bundle i'm just gonna tell you right now get it just buy it don't even ask. Don't even say Nance should I just get it. Okay? I'm going to get one. Um she puts foilables in there. She I don't know if she's going to put foils in there or not, but um for the price of what you get in this box is so worth it. Plus she's retiring, so you're not going to be able to get it anyway. Plus if you don't like something, I'm just going to put this out there. If you don't like something in your box, I am sure that if enough of us in the group purchase the box, we'll be able to put up some kind of a uh, trade. If there's something in your box maybe you don't like, maybe we offer up some kind of trade in our group. And we say, hey, I don't like the coffee beans. I'm looking for pineapples. Will somebody trade me? So I'm just going to say I think we can probably do that in our group. But as soon as those boxes go for sale, you need to get them. And um, I will say I am working on a little side project. Um, trying to find a company. If we can't get her foils anymore, where can we get the foils from? Are they going to be just as good quality? So I am doing some research on that. I do have a little bit of help in that department. I cannot afford to buy her company, you guys. I would love to. <laughs> if we want to do a GoFundMe, Nancy Stamps buys Creative Vision Stamps Foil, you guys go right ahead. But I don't think we can afford it. <laughs> so these came out pretty cool. So in ending, we started this video in comparing the HSN Spectrum Noir Alcohol Ink Bundle. You get 12 inks. I also purchased the Yupo paper and the blender solution. Um, my recommendation would be to save your money. Um, I would not purchase these unless you purchasing them strictly to refill your markers. If you are not purchasing them to refill your markers, like I have markers that don't have those colors, um, I don't think that I would recommend buying these.
Yeah, in the email. Join, get the email from Creative Vision Stamps. She's the owner. Sorry, I should have said that. Sunshine gloves, honey. She's high and she's got inky fingers. We, she can't. We need. We need to supervise this girl. <laughs> Poor sunshine. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys, I'm giving you the head start. If the box goes on sale, get on it. It will sell out. Last time it sold out in two days. No, if we're going to get the company, you guys, we're going to call it Foiling Snobs Club Foil. <laughs> It'll be FSC Foil. <laughs> Right, Stacy. <laughs> FSC foil. Quick, somebody find us a rich investor. <laughs> and if he's single, send him my way. <laughs> he or she, I don't even care at this point in my life. <laughs> okay, go fund. Go fund me, FSC foil, Laura. <laughs> We're gonna take over the FSC foiling club. I know. All right. Yes, go stock the creative foil thinging. It's. Uh, I'll put it on here for you. And look at her stamps. Her stamps are beautiful. There you go. We do need a foiling sugar daddy. Where's our guys at tonight? I didn't see Rich. I didn't see Mike. I didn't see Lee. Where's our guys at? <laughs> They're hiding in the background. Yes, she has red rubber stamps. They are good stamps, yes. She does have, oh, she sold out all her snarky stamps. I knew they were going to go first. Tracy got her mystery box last year, and she just could not stop raving over it. I remember that. Oh, yeah, Lee probably is sleeping because he's over in the UK. Okay, everybody say good night. Carol, I got your mail today. I will email you, but I think you are correct. So we'll talk later. <laughs> Least you got one, sunshine. I ain't got one. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. I will see you guys tomorrow night sometime. Like I said, I normally come on between 7 and 8, somewhere around there. Lately, I've been cooking dinner at 7, and so we've been eating and, and eating dinner at 7. So I've been getting down here around 7.30, so just so you guys know. All right, and of course, if the weather's nice, you know where I'll be. All right. I love you all. Please stay safe. Sending you all virtual hugs. Thank you so much again for all of your support and everything. I will get links up online. I will put the link up there for this for you guys if you want to get it. I would only recommend getting it if you're going to buy markers. I do not recommend it for any of these projects here. Just saying. But I'll put the pinata inks up for you guys. These are good value. And I'll find those Upo paper links and I'll put those up for you. And I'll definitely put this bad boy up there for you because this is fun. Okay. Good night, guys. Stay safe. Don't forget the thumbs up. Bye.